Rob? Um, 
it's really uh, remarkable uh, what they do and uh, the sense of professionalism uh, for this volunteer group, especially in Anderson <coughs> County. And I, I travel a lot throughout the state, but this has to be the largest in, in some respects. And when you see all of them dressed up uh, in their whites that night, uh, I, I don't know what the number is, Brett. It's over 200. Over 200 uh, all dressed up uh, coming together and, uh, and, uh, and talking about the issues and, and honoring uh, those and working together as a team. So uh, I do appreciate it and recognize uh, how much uh, leadership it takes to do that. So you've been a big part of that. Uh, it really is appropriate uh, that we start our day here today uh, to recognize the anniversary of September 11, uh, 2001. It's hard for me to believe, and I'm sure some of you as well, that it's been 17 years uh, since our nation was attacked that day. The events of that day are still fresh in my mind, uh, so I'm sure there are many here uh, who are old enough, I know they are, uh, who, uh, who understand and remember uh, what happened on that Tuesday morning. I hope each of us will take a moment to reflect on uh, those our nation lost uh, 17 years ago today. Uh, average Americans uh, just going to work and the first responders who rushed into burning buildings to try and save them again just doing their jobs. I also want to recognize and honor those service men and women who answered our nation's call uh, to serve in the global war on terror, a generation of Americans who volunteered to defend America, who fully understood when they did so uh, that that might include time in the war zone. As we remember uh, the events of that day and uh, and we all know too well. Uh, let's remember the days after uh, as well. Uh, today's political environment can be so divisive, so hateful, and toxic. And I can't think of a better way to honor those we've lost than to go about our day and every day in a manner worthy of that sacrifice. And treating each other with respect and civility is a good way to start. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention uh, today's deployment of the Swift Water uh, Rescue Team to North Carolina to stage an anticipation of Hurricane Florence and the devastation uh, that will probably follow. I know uh, we always have a safe and productive mission and are proud of their service. Now, uh, to why we're here in Addison County today. This is our sixth capital for a day. And our goal is to hit every county uh, by the end of the year. It's, uh, it's great to see so many legislators here, uh, Representative Baser, uh, Representative uh, Smith, uh, Warren, and I see Warren, Warren uh, here as well. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming. It's, uh, it's been great meeting with so many people uh, throughout the state who don't have an opportunity to travel to Montpelier. By bringing state government to different regions, we're able to learn uh, directly from the people about their challenges as well as the opportunities uh, they see. It's so critical that we focus on helping all corners of the state. And that means getting out there and listening to and learning from those who don't see it every day. And we don't see them every day. So uh, it's been a huge success from my standpoint. In each stop, we connect with someone who had a problem that we're now working to resolve for an idea that is worth exploring. Here's just one example. In Lindenville, we went to Caledonia uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we, uh, we visited uh, some members here, uh, visited a co-working space that, that was struggling to find internet service. We connected them with a provider which provided a short-term solution and is now working towards a long-term solution. And there are many, many other examples of, of areas where we've been able to, if we just didn't know what the issue was, but we were able to resolve it fairly quickly as a result. Now, unfortunately, uh, some of us have suggested uh, that these tours are not a good, good use of state resources. But I strongly disagree. And uh, 
I think uh, we should be out there uh, each and every day. We should be out there and see for, for ourselves, and we should invite them, those who are, are critical of what we're doing, to come with us. Because state government really exists for the people. Not for us, but for the people. And I can't, uh, for the life of me, understand why anyone would suggest that we should be out there meeting with the people we serve. And I call that good government. So we'll be out there today doing just what we've done in the last five tours. Some of the things I'll be doing include uh, seeing the construction of the tunnel in, uh, in Middlebury. Uh, making some announcements uh, around our electric vehicle and energy efficiency work, uh, having lunch with farmers at uh, Sunrise Orchard uh, in uh, Cornwall, uh, addressing students in Virginia's, and having a roundtable discussion with the Addison County Chamber and Addison County Economic Development Corporation members. So uh, maybe what we should do at this point is uh, expect to go around the room and talk about uh, where we're going to be as we split up uh, throughout the county. Um, I'll start with uh, Secretary Quinn. I'm John Quinn, Secretary of Digital Services, and uh, today I'm, I'm going to start my day uh, uh, I'm following uh, Secretary Quinn and the Governor to the Bridge and Rail Construction Project. After that, I'm going to take a tour of the communication facility at uh, Middlebury Regional Emergency Management Center. Oh. And um, <laughs> excuse me. after that, I'll be going to the lunch, luncheon with the governor, and then I will be um, going to the uh, address at Virginia's High School, followed by a meeting with the technology uh, teacher at Virginia's. Great. Thank you. Allison. Good morning, I'm next. Allison Eastman, Deputy Secretary of the Agency of Agriculture. Um, I will be starting off my day uh, with Farm to School at uh, Brigham Memorial School in Cornwall, um, bringing some staff with me that's not yet here. Uh, we will continue on to Sunrise Orchards where we will um, have lunch and also be talking with our farmers. Uh, from there, uh, the meet and greet, we will go to Champlain Orchard, which is diversified um, ag. We have our Food Safety Modernization Act, which was passed two years ago, my last year that I served in the legislature, and it was an educate before you regulate. So we're bringing some of our FISMA staff with us uh, to the orchard that does a lot of diversified ag, hard cider, donuts, pies, sliced apples, and uh, for those of you who don't know, it is apple harvest season, so that will be exciting too. I'm sure there won't be many workers working in the rain, but um, it will still give us an idea of what's going on. Then I'm going to head up to uh, join the governor in Bergen's, and my FISMA staff will continue on to singing Cedars Farmstead in Orwell. So that's our day. Thank you. Dan. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Dan French, Secretary of Education. Uh, I'll be joined today by Deputy Secretary Boucher. Uh, we'll be traveling to a variety of education sites in the county, uh, beginning this morning with a tour of uh, Bristol Elementary School, uh, then to the Cornwall School, uh, with a focus on their Farm to School lunch program. Uh, look forward to uh, seeing that. Uh, we'll be at the uh, Sunrise Orchards as well, and um, Hanford Career Center, and working our way up to Virgins at the high school uh, later in the afternoon. Thank you. Brad? Good morning, Governor. Uh, Brad Furman, Deputy Secretary of Administration. And we have um, a variety of departments that deal with our buildings, uh, the administrative arm of state government that helps support all the other departments. And uh, we do a lot of internal services for the state government. And we also have a couple of outreach departments, um, tax department, Commissioner Samson is here, uh, and buildings now service with the buildings, and Commissioner of the is here as well, too. So we spread out throughout the day. Um, I'm starting off the morning with uh, a tour of the mission of uh, employment training of uh, Otter Creek Brewery, um, then the uh, bus facility following the governor, uh, lunchtime, and then we'll be visiting a couple of our libraries, which also falls into the agency administration uh, at the IC Public Library in Millbury. We'll be having a conversation with lodging operators on legislative changes, and uh, also a roundtable discussion on changes in tax law, and then after that we'll be at the Bixby Library and in the Audrey Room in Virginia. And then we'll close up in the debris uh, in Addison. Thank you. 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 Thank
Good morning, Julie Moore, Secretary of Natural Resources. Uh, I'm going to start today with Deputy Forest and Parks Commissioner Sam Lincoln and Commissioner Tierney, a tour of the combined heat and power facility at Middlebury College. Um, then look forward to participating in the electric vehicle announcements later this morning. Lunch at Sunrise Orchards and this afternoon, I believe Commissioner Goldstein and I will be touring a good point recycling. Um, and uh, then attending the editorial board meeting with the Addison Independent and look forward to showcasing uh, the new Dead Creek Visitor Center, Center that was recently opened by our Fish and Wildlife Department this afternoon uh, for the Cabinet's uh, good morning, everybody. Tom Anderson, Commissioner of Public Safety. I, I do want to thank uh, Chief LaRose and the Bristol Fire Department for having us here today. It seemed, it seemed right and appropriate that on the anniversary of 9-11, we, we have this meeting at fire, fire Department. So thank, thank you for hosting us. Um, just so everybody knows, I, on the way down here this morning, I uh, wish the Swiftwater team well. Uh, they were deploying out of Colchester. So on 9-11, we're sending 17 men and women into harm's way down in North Carolina. Um, they indicated to me that they're going to be staged out of Raleigh, but right, and it looks like they're going to be staged about 30 miles from the coast, where the eye of the storm is, is predicted to go right over. So I would ask um, everyone to keep them in their thoughts and their prayers um, over the next uh, over the next few weeks. Um, so I will be heading to Middlebury for a meeting with law, local of uh, the state county law enforcement uh, after the meeting today uh, and the state's attorney. Uh, those generally are pretty lively meetings, and then uh, this afternoon I'll be meeting with emergency management, firefighters, and EMS folks. Uh, I think back here um, this afternoon, and then to the debrief. Thank you. Mike. Good morning, Governor. Uh, Mike Sherlin, uh, Secretary of Commerce and Community Development, and uh, our whole team is uh, is here again. Deputy Secretary Brady's uh, already got an event underway uh, in Virginia, discussing opportunity zones. Uh, Commissioner Goldstein, Commissioner Knight, Deputy here and we'll be spreading out around the county over the next few hours. Uh, among the things that I'm going to attend, uh, the uh, bridge and rail construction project, uh, electric vehicle charging discussion, we have a number of uh, meetings interspersed with, uh, with businesses around the county as well as some of our tourism uh, assets. Uh, and this afternoon, uh, a couple of meetings with businesses together with Commissioner Goldstein and uh, business park uh, discussion here at 3 o'clock uh, back behind uh, the fire station, um, among other things. Great. Joe. Thank you, Governor. I'm Joe Flynn, Secretary of Transportation. Uh, Addison County has uh, several transportation-related projects occurring. Currently, we have four projects in the county that are in the planning stage. Uh, VTrans has 10 projects currently in the development stage, and local communities have another four in the development stage. And we have four active construction projects underway as we speak. Uh, when I leave here, I, as the governor said, will be joining the governor uh, for the tour of the Middlebury Tunnel and Rail Project, uh, after which we will be meeting with uh, the Neighbors Together group briefly in town. And then after that, I'll be joining the governor and others at the uh, EV charging station grant announcement. Uh, we'll be attending the, uh, the other announcement at the Middlebury bus facility. And then I will be going to Middlebury Airport for a meeting with our staff. He trans runs the airport there in town. I will be uh, following that going to New Haven where we will be building a new facility for the district garage in New Haven and I will be visiting that site. Uh, after which I'll be going to the Virginia Rail Station. You may recall we moved that facility a few years back to Cross Kmart Crossing and now we're in the final throes of uh, putting up the interior. So I'll be meeting with several people there. And of course, we will conclude at Dead Creek this morning before this meeting started. I had the pleasure to meet with Valerie Capels from the town and Peter Coffey, my old friend, who's the chairman of the select board, to address an issue out back. And to your point about solving some things, I'd like to say that I think perhaps uh, the agency can do something along that seems to have been stuck a little bit. So just from that meeting this morning. Great. Thank you. Adam. Good morning, Governor. Uh, it's uh, delightful to be here. So this morning, I'll be joining what looks to be a very large contingent um, touring the uh, tunnel and bridge project downtown Middlebury, after which uh, I'll join a, a number of people uh, speaking with a local uh, initiative to uh, help deal with the impact of that project in downtown Middlebury. Um, after that, I'll be joining uh, 
governor and um, cabinet for lunch, uh, meeting with a number of local farmers. Uh, and that afternoon, uh, I'll be joining a, a tax and uh, legislative uh, overview and talk with uh, Commissioner Sampson, who's sitting quietly over there in the corner. And I'll end up in uh, Addison. Clarence. Good morning, Governor. Um, good morning, everyone. Clarence Davis, Deputy Secretary of the Agency of Human Services. Um, unfortunately, I have a short morning this morning. I'll be meeting with folks at Porter Hospital. Um, they have a new uh, nursing and rehabilitation uh, facility they just built. So I will be there in the morning and returning to Waterbury for the service meetings. Lindsay. Hi, uh, Lindsay Curley, Commissioner of Labor, Chief Thank you for hosting us. Um, I will start my day over at Otter Creek Brewing um, for a tour and a meeting. Um, Otter Creek has done a phenomenal job to develop health and safety programs that protect its workers. In fact, Otter Creek is one of only four breweries in the country that has achieved SHARP status. SHARP is a nationally recognized program in safety and health. So we're really excited to do that. I'll be joined by Colleen Hale, Colleen Hale who is our Assistant Director of Workforce Development. Dustin Degree, who is the Director of Workforce Expansion, as well as a few other people in the room. Really excited for that tour. Um, after that, I will be traveling to Middlebury to Vermont Coffee Company. Um, Paul Ralston, who was in the House, um, as, uh, in, on the House Commerce Committee formally, uh, was uh, an advocate for carving and paving a way for independent contractors in the state of Vermont. Um, Vermont Coffee Company also received recognition for being the nation's first 100% renewable biogas powered coffee, coffee roastery. So um, we're excited to go there and visit them as well. Um, then I will be having lunch at the Orchard, looking forward to that, and followed by a visit to the Hannaford Career Center with Secretary French and a few others where we'll be learning about a three way project or a, a a uh, multi-way project, I should say, between uh, Vermont Department of Labor, Adult Tech Ed, the Tech Center, and Resource. Then I will be finishing my day uh, with the round table um, with ACECD, EDC, and the Chamber, um, joining Governor Scott as well, again, as many in the room. So um, we're looking forward to, to a really busy day here. Hey. <laughs> Uh, well, good morning, everybody. I'm Mike Pichek. I'm the commissioner at the Department of Financial Regulation, and I'd like to thank Chief LaRose as well. Um, I had other appointments, but I think I'm going to cancel them to go with Brad and Lindsay Dawn. <laughs> so I'm going to make a nick on that. Uh, but in all seriousness, I'm going first to the National Bank of Orwell uh, down in Orwell uh, to meet with uh, Brian Young. Uh, the bank traces its roots back to 1832. Um, and it was the 229th bank to receive a federal charter in, uh, in 1863 when Abraham Lincoln signed the National Banking Act. Uh, and uh, it is still uh, doing very well. Uh, uh, community banks are shrinking and, and, and uh, not uh, doing uh, economically very well. And this one has uh, bucked that trend. And it'll be good to catch up with Brian uh, and, uh, and tour the bank and, and talk to him a little bit about the issues they're facing. Um, then I'm going to visit with the National Bank in Middlebury and have a similar conversation. We've been working with uh, Caroline Carpenter, who's the president there, on an issue they've been dealing with uh, relating uh, to some of their customers. Um, staying in Middlebury to meet with the Middlebury Co-op Insurance Company, which does a lot of farm uh, uh, protection in terms of uh, farmers across the state. Uh, and uh, we passed legislation just a, a year ago to allow them to expand to some other uh, states uh, in New England as well. So they're uh, doing uh, well uh, as, you know, in terms of their business plan. Um, and then meeting with an insurance agency in Virgins uh, to discuss uh, some issues of importance there. And then interestingly enough, I'll uh, sort of take some of this perspective and have a conference call with uh, some regulators in Washington, D.C. that uh, I think will be able to help uh, inform some national policy with some sort of uh, experience on the ground as well. So I look forward to that. Jim. Good morning, sir. Jim Tierney, the Commissioner of the Department of Public Service and Regulated Utilities in the state and a myriad of other things. Um, I want to thank Chief LaRose for having us here this morning. And it's uh, wonderful to see your square away operation here, Chief. Uh, Governor, it's, um, it's very meaningful to me to take a moment to remember 9-11. Just last week, I was carrying out your commission in Texas, serving on the Texas Legislative Committee, doing fact-finding about low-level radioactive waste disposal. And it turned out that the senator who was chairing that committee was a survivor of 9-11. He had something like 30 surgeries uh, to put his life back together. 
He happened to be a fellow Army officer, so we had a good bond. He sends you his regards, and it was truly an inspiration to see people soldiering off resiliently in the wake of that tragedy as well. It's a testament to the strength of the nation. Um, my day-to-day -day is going to be full of things that I hope carry out uh, the priorities that you set for your administration for the last two years. Uh, the first event for me will be joining my colleagues touring the combined heat facility in um, Middlebury, um, followed by um, joining to you for the announcement of important work that we've been doing on EV charging stations and the use of the new set of the monies. Um, and I will then be joining you for lunch, and then I'll be traveling to the Regional Planning Commission in Addison. What I've been doing on these tours is checking in with these regional planning commissions to see how well we're doing in my department in honoring the will of the people as they do their enhanced energy planning in Act 174. It's one thing for me to get the papers in my office and have my staff go over the submission of the plans. It's another thing to touch base with folks that in real time to say, how did this go over in your community? How are you faring into this process? What can we be doing better? After that uh, visit, I'll be going up to um, the Vermont Cider Company, where I'll be meeting with stakeholders uh, in that business as well as uh, in our natural gas sector to discuss the uh, considerable natural gas savings, or that is energy savings that the business has been able to realize as a result of its expanded use of natural gas through the pipeline that was built in And then I'll be joining you for the debrief. Good. Uh, maybe at this time, just start with you, Sam, if you can just identify yourself and, and what you do. And if there's anything you want to add, feel free, but just to get a sense of who's in the room. Thank you, Governor. Glad to be here. Uh, Sam Lincoln, Deputy Commissioner of Forest Parks and Recreation, and uh, joining others on the, on the tours, as previously mentioned. Uh, Kai Sampson, Commissioner of Tax, as was previously mentioned, uh, having a get-together with uh, Wendy and some tourism and marketing folks and some lodging operators in the area. Uh, and also doing a tax and legislative update with uh, interested taxpayers, businesses, and uh, whoever else cares to it. Good morning, Wendy Knight, Commissioner of Tourism and Marketing. Uh, the only other thing I'm doing today, aside from some of the visits we've already mentioned, is I'm doing the UVM Morgan Horse Farm. Um, UVM has invested quite a bit in uh, their facility. They're hoping it to be a, a tourism attraction, so. Uh, Douglas Farnham, Policy Director and Autonomous for the Tax Department, just supporting Commissioner Sampson's efforts today. Joan Goldstein, uh, Commissioner of Economic Development, um, joining the Middlebury Neighbors Together discussion, uh, going on to Vermont Coffee Company, visiting Connor Built Homes, Bees Wrap, Vermont Tree Goods, the Addison County uh, Chamber, as well as the RDC, and then the RAP. Uh, Matt Birmingham, the Director of State Police. I'll be with Commissioner Anderson meeting with law enforcement in Addison County. Chris. Chris Cole, Commissioner of Buildings and General Services. Strangely enough, I'll be visiting state buildings today. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be visiting the Agency of Human Services uh, regional office in Middlebury, which I haven't been to yet. And I'll also be visiting the courthouse this morning. And I will join this afternoon a uh, review of recycling. And I'll also be looking at energy efficiency at the Saturday. Good morning. Um, Josh Hamper, Deputy Commissioner, Department of Housing and Community Development. In addition to the uh, visits that Secretary Sherwin mentioned, I'll be doing two housing visits right from here, visiting Lindell Mobile Home Park with uh, our Mobile Home Park Coordinator for the state and a few housing partners to uh, look at some of their needs. They have some septic issues on site that uh, need to be addressed. And then looking at a new housing development, family housing, this afternoon in Virgin's um, on Armin Lane with uh, some other housing partners and the development team. Uh, Peter Coffin, Chair of the Bristol Select Board, uh, retired Deputy Director of Vermont Emergency Management, and a 42 year member of this fire department, which I'm very proud of. Uh, that's great. Harvey, right, you might as well identify yourself. Yeah. Harvey Smith, uh, State Representative. I represent that in, uh, over here in New Haven, Great Bridge, and Bridgeport. Good morning. I'm Colleen Hale. I'm Workforce Development with the Department of Labor. I'll be going with Commissioner Curley today, following up on some of the Workforce Development. I'm Valerie Caples. I'm the Town Administrator for Bristol. I'm also a member of the Addison County Economic Development Corporation Board. Uh, I was hoping to be at the round table this afternoon, but I learned there was a schedule conference that I won't be able to make, so I'm sorry to miss that. But I will be at the 1.30 uh, event here, and also the 3 o'clock event um, in Stony Hill. 
Fred. Yeah, I'm, I'm representative of Bay Strip. Uh, Bristol's my hometown, uh, and I'm the rep for this area. Um, Bristol Fire Department, for as long as I've known it, is uh, top notch, I think, in the county. So they're one of the few fire departments that don't have uh, uh, a demand uh, in situation for volunteers. There are people waiting to get on the Bristol Fire Department. And, it, and, it, uh, and that's been that way, I think, for the 50 years or so that I've been in the um, I love I love this district I'm in. I love Bristol. And I appreciate very much the governor and all you administrators taking time to come to visit, not only here, for a few things going on with businesses in Bristol, but the county itself. Uh, it's the land of the honey, we call it. And it, it truly is a special place. So thank you very much. Ted Fisher with AOE Communications. I'll be uh, visiting schools with Secretary French and Deputy Secretary Bruce today. Heather Boucher, Deputy Secretary of Education. Um, as Ben just said, um, the three of us, along with Secretary French, will be joining a number of schools throughout Madison County. And then towards the end of the day, I will join uh, Commissioner Curley at the Hanford Career Center. Happy to be here. I'm Beth Hastigy. I'm the Commissioner of Human Resources for Vermont. And we are one of the state's largest employers, the largest employer. And so later in the afternoon, I'll be headed to the Hanford Career Center as well as the education and um, <laughs> Department of Labor folks, and we will be actually maybe do some recruiting there for our own workforce, because just like other employers, we have challenges um, hiring skilled workforce. And then in the morning, I'll be joining Commissioner Cole for um, a tour of military facilities and hopefully meeting with some state employees there. Our assistant chief. I'm Eric Warren. I'm the assistant chief with Bristol Fire. I've been a member here for 15 years. And I'm also an employee at Vermont Emergency Management as a state exercise administrator. And uh, thanks for coming to the firehouse and uh, using our facility. I'm Dustin Degree. I work in the governor's office. I'm the director of workforce expansion. I'll be joining Colleen and some of the folks from education and Commissioner Curley uh, on kind of the workforce tour in the next 15 minutes. I'm going to see if we can swap the coffee tour for the beer tour. So <laughs> the beer tour might be a little more interactive. <laughs> we'll see. That's going to be Rebecca? Uh, Rebecca Kelly, I'm the Governor's Communications Director. I sufficiently shamed you all into using our hashtag on social media on the last event. Good job, we got trending. Uh, so let's do that again, hashtag VT Capital for a day, and that's capital with an O and the number four. Um, and I'll just be following the Governor around and um, helping to push those messages out. Great. <coughs> you, uh, you know, Laura also work for the Governor's Office. Um, I'll be supporting the governor throughout the day. So, Warren. Thank you, uh, Warren and Mike from uh, Ferrisburg, Addison 3, which includes Pergens, Waltham, Canton, and Addison, so a number of places that you'll be visiting. I certainly hope to be at uh, Pergens High School and at the uh, Chamber of Commerce meetings and uh, meet uh, many of you along the way. And uh, I ditto uh, the governor's remarks about the Aston County firefighters meetings. Uh, we've been to many together before and after he was governor, and it's a really impressive event and Pretty a dedicated amazing, group of people yeah. that uh, we really rely on, and we can be thankful we have su such a dedicated force. With that, uh, are there any issues that uh, the county would like to bring up at this time that uh, maybe you've encountered over the last week or so, or anything that you on the, uh, the forefront that we should be, uh, we should know about. <clears throat> Good. Well, Governor, to return to my trip to Texas, it was a very interesting uh, day-long hearing that I, I um, before I went to this hearing in Austin, I took the trouble to go to Andrews County, which is where the low-level radioactive waste disposal site is located in Texas to uh, just have a look around, see what uh, um, the facility is about, what the community is about, and met with uh, legislators there and uh, community leaders. Uh, it's an important issue because, as you know, I also serve on the Nuclear Decommissioning uh, Citizens Advisory Panel, and there are some members who have been concerned about Vermont's practice of exporting its low-level radioactive waste uh, to Texas. And so I can give you my assurance that for everything I saw on the ground at Andrews County, 
Um, this is an activity that enjoys enormous community support there. And uh, the folks in Texas are grateful to have Vermont's participation in that compact. Um, not to get into the weeds, but uh, Vermont and Texas have joined together in a partnership that's sponsored by the federal government to allow for low-level radioactive waste to be disposed of in this manner. Texas would not be able to avail itself of the benefits of this program federally unless it had another state as a partner. So Vermont, small as it is, is um, really leveraging its size with Texas in order to have a responsible way to dispose of low-level radioactive waste. Uh, the hearing itself also went really well. Texas legislators is considering making some changes as to how disposal rates are set, and that has potential impacts for ratepayers here in Vermont. So my job in your name was to make sure that Vermont's interests were well represented. And I was very pleased to see that Texas is more than considerate of the impacts of its actions as a legislature on Vermont. It was a very encouraging thing to see. I could not have said that to you in the abstract before going to Texas last week. Texas, remind me, doesn't Texas meet every other year, uh, the legislature? I'm sorry, frankly, I don't know, but we have a reason to learn from Texas. No disrespect, Representative Bill White. <laughs> Forecast right now is that the thing's going to come, come on shore. It's going to linger over North Carolina and maybe head back out to sea. Uh, we've got a high pressure system coming in that's going to park over us. I mean, our, our weekend forecast looks tremendous, uh, sunny and high in, high in the 80s. So, uh, but you know, we also have you know we also have uh, enough people here to handle any emergency we might have, and we have the opportunity, the ability to bring them back on shore notice if need. So, all in all, I thought the, you know, uh, agreeing to the compact and agreeing to send that SWIFT 14 down was appropriate. Okay, Flynn, has, has there been any uh, outreach in terms of uh, that region for resources and transportation? There haven't been yet, Governor, but we're pulsing that very closely, uh, very similar to what we almost did last year in the state of Florida in the wake of one of their most recent hurricanes. Uh, and I would just add that Chief LaRose told me this morning when I came in that Vermont is also supporting the state of Hawaii to so emac the person who's now in the way of Hurricane Olivia. Yes. So, where are you at? Allison. Secretary Tevitz is um, attending the National Association of State Department of Ag um, annual meeting, and that's the reason why he's not able to join us today. Um, NASA has uh, accepted action items uh, before this meeting and realizing the state of dairy and the four years of low milk prices, um, the secretary had put forward an action item uh, to allow uh, NASA to lobby on a national basis towards a new milk pricing system um, and work with the cooperatives as well as the producers and, and all stakeholders involved. Um, the secretary reported late yesterday that that was uh, passed and accepted by NASA, all of the states unanimously. So that was uh, pretty exciting news for us. There's a lot of conversations going on, and to know that all 50 uh, states, plus are those in the Commonwealth, Puerto Rico, etc., um, are, are supporting the effort going forward. Great. Thank you. Tomorrow morning, I'll be meeting with the FCC chairman uh, in Springfield as part of a roundtable that I was invited to to talk about rural broadband and connectivity issues in the state. So I'll be lobbying for um, for them to loosen restrictions on how we can spend money and who gets money in order to build that broadband. Uh, we had the interviews for the Vermont Phosphorus Innovation Challenge on Friday last week. Uh, Secretary Sherling, Secretary Tebbets, and I have all participated. Uh, we interviewed 12 different outfits of the 25 that had submitted proposals and have some really tough work in front of us narrowing Can you that just field. Briefly, uh, tell uh, those in the room that may not be familiar with Foster's challenges. Uh, yes. Describe that. 
Sure. So uh, Vermont has a, a phosphorus imbalance in that we import more feed and fertilizer than we export in agricultural products, so milk, meat, um, and other agricultural products. And one of the, the ideas we've been working with is that it, it should be possible to actually uh, capture some of that excess phosphorus, um, repackage it in a saleable material, whether it's a fertilizer or a compost type product, and hopefully generate economic activity and revenue for farmers, um, as well as improving the, the phosphorus balance in Vermont. And there's some really exciting work already on the way, or underway on the ground here in Vermont. Um, we're hoping to be able to, to amplify and frankly accelerate that work um, and look forward to, to what comes next in terms of making uh, awards to help folks build business cases and prototype the processes they presented to us and ultimately with the idea um, that the state may choose to invest in some of these operations. So you narrowed it down to 12, is that what you said? Right, we received, I think, 27 proposals. We selected 12 to come in and do um, presentations. We heard all of those presentations last Friday and have committed to folks that we will get back to them by the end of the month with our decisions. As I heard, uh, it, it was difficult to get narrowed down to the 12 because it, there were so many good ideas. It was, it was. And, and the vast majority of the, the proposals were from Vermont-based enterprises, so, which is also really yeah, exciting. Great, including a collaborative from Madison County. <coughs> okay. That's, that's good news as well. Uh, any other issues? Yes. Just a couple quick things, Governor. Sam wanted me to remind everyone that there's the DT Sheriff's kickoff meeting next Monday. That's a critical kickoff, so for you and your team people to, to attend that. And uh, it's a significant program for the state. Um, you know, since its inception 40 plus years ago, the state has raised over nine and a half million dollars through its state employees. Yeah, can you just explain what VT Shares is? Yeah, VT Shares is a state employees charitable contribution uh, appeal process, basically, where um, through a payroll deduction process or a contribution that you get to contribute to a Vermont-based nonprofit and to help support them. And we are this is our 41st year, and we've contributed in excess of nine and a half million dollars through the state employees. So it's a very you know, key program uh, for all these nonprofits, and one that we should be very proud of. So, is there any competition between the uh, departments and agencies? There are competitions and goals that <laughs> set. And uh, last year, several of our departments met their goals and exceeded their goals. And actually, there's a an award ceremony this year uh, for the second half of that meeting on Monday to uh, to uh, recognize those those departments that exceeded their goals. So, those of you who have been invited to that, congratulations. Those of you who have not, <laughs> good luck this year. <laughs> um, so anyway, a reminder. And secondly, we were notified yesterday that um, you know our rating agencies have reached out to us and we'll be uh, looking at reassessing our our, uh, our our ratings sooner than later. Typically, they wait until we go out to, to the market to issue our bonds. Uh, but we were notified from the Treasurer's Office yesterday that we want to do that as early as late September or early October. So they sent us a series of questions that they would like to have us all, um, it will take all of us to answer some of these questions. They talk a lot about our, um, our demographic challenges, a lot of the challenges you have recognized, Governor, and some of your policies are trying to address. Um, our demographics, our, um, our aging population, our unfunded liabilities, our infrastructure maintenance, any deferred maintenance we have on our infrastructure across our transportation system, our buildings, and um, cyber security challenges, mm -hmm. how we're going to address those issues, and then climate change risk that may be on, you know, those in the state of So kind of a variety, a variety of questions. So we'll be reaching out and kind of developing a team to address each each question and, and formulate a response. And we don't have the, the, the date yet where they're going to need this, but it's going to be again probably late September or October. So we'll know if I expect it to happen. Great. Anything else? Oh, no. Yes. Uh, folks may or may not be aware there's been a new find of uh, Emerald Ash Borer in Bennington County. And uh, I'm going to leave here today. Uh, our department, working with the Agency of Ag, uh, U.S. Forest Service, and USDA partners are holding a uh, Another public informational meeting for landowners, um, forest managers, municipalities, utilities in Bennington County tonight um, to uh, make them aware of the resources. And we have the opportunity, we have a national expert on emerald ash borer for the works for the U.S. Forest Service to be attending. And 
uh, hopefully uh, resolve some people's concerns, give them uh, ideas of what, how they can help slow the spread and manage their land properly and things like that. So uh, it's an ongoing effort on behalf of the department as it pops up around the state in more places. It's a huge concern for us as a state. It's moving, it seems to be moving incredibly fast. It is moving a little faster. It's moving in New Hampshire too. Uh, it's moving north through New Hampshire uh, much quicker than they had thought it was. So uh, it's it's a reality that we had hoped we wouldn't have to face, but it's here. Thank you. Yeah, Just to add, uh, jumping on the VT shares, this would be the first year that, as you guys are promoting that to your employees, that you have a 5% charitable tax credit. Vermont is uh, one of right. just two or three states in the nation now that has a charitable contribution tax credit. Um, and that uh, was your proposal, Governor, uh, work with the legislature to get that passed. Uh, so in almost every other state, you have to be itemizing deductions. In Vermont, you know, most employees who are participating uh, are going to qualify for at least 5% tax credit on the Vermont tax liability. And I, I don't think that's an insignificant uh, factor in uh, getting people to sign up and, and be charitable uh, through, that, through that system. So um, good news on that front. Anything else? Anybody else? Well, thank you again. Thank you to the Bristol Fire Department for hosting us. Have a great uh, morning. We'll see you at lunch and uh, then we'll move on from there. But I appreciate your efforts.